Figured I'd just do a little garden tour today. Let's take a look at what we got going on. All right, so starting in the back, we have the elephant heart plum, which y'all saw me re relocate this year. Uh, you can see all this new growth from here to there. And that's about, I don't know, call it about 12 inches, 10 inches of new growth. Here's new growth here, all of that. Every bit of that, that's, that's about 20 inches of new growth. So that, that tree has transplanted well. So as Lead Farmer says, yes, you can move a tree. Next, we have the Santa Rosa plum that I planted here a couple of years ago. Now, I think sort of the measuring stick on how trees are doing, number one, it's about twice as wide as it was last year, canopy wise and I cut it into a into a bowl shape on purpose because I don't want this tree to get too tall because I got a bunch of stuff behind it and the sun comes up over there comes across the sky and then it gets behind this tree so I I'm trying to keep as much of the sun coming from this direction as possible but the size of the trunk I think is what dictates whether or not a tree is doing well and this tree trunk it's got that one bad spot on it but it doesn't seem to be hurting it and i'm seeing a lot of this you know where it's kind of looks like the bark is is splitting on it um so anyway this tree is doing really well it's put on a lot of new growth this year i mean all of this from here to the end is new growth i mean that's a yard i mean three feet at least of new growth so that one's doing well then next up we have the uh this is a chicago hardy fig I bought it from Tractor Supply last year, a little bitty thing. Um, I mean, it was, you know, that tall out of the ground. I mean, this is, that's that's where it was. That's how tall it was. And it was only about, you know, this thick, you know, maybe, maybe as big as your pinky. Um, it was that big. It put out four shoots. The fourth shoot I buried with one of these bricks, rooted it, dug it up, and I got several cuttings over there I'll show you. But anyway, this fig this year, so it took it, you know, basically one growing season every shoot and see that's a new branch from this year but every branch that it grew last year is producing figs you know so those will be ready in the next few months you can see all the figs on this tree so i'm very happy with that doing really well all right next up after the chicago hardy um this is a purple tree collared I don't know, I was just doing that for fun just to see what it would do and see if it'll bolt maybe go to seed and give me a bunch of it out here because i mean that right out here like i say doesn't get a whole lot of sun maybe you know half a day's of sun if that right next to it are, are i tried a two-in-one planting of plums so we got a chickasaw plum here and a satsuma plum here they're both doing really well i'm trying to keep them pruned off each other i have to prune that a little bit this year to knock it back some but i mean those those are doing really well that's all of it there now i got a bunch of junk over here but it, you know, you think it's junk, and then you look up there, and I hope it comes out on the video, but y'all see all those little grapes in there? That's muscadine, wild muscadine vine that's just growing, and if I get a ladder, I could get up there and get it. This tree blooms, the satsuma blooms really early, and um, all of the plums dropped off of it this year, but that's, you know, that's really okay, because it's, it's doubled in size this year, which means it'll have double the amount of plums next year. So all good there. This is a cherry tree that I'm fairly certain is dead. I've done some scratch testing and it, uh, it does not appear to be alive. So probably pull that one up. I don't know that I'm gonna go back with anything there, but we've got more cherry trees over here. This one here is a coral champagne. Okay. And it, it had some die back this year too. I don't know what, I don't think the cherry trees like it back here. Now this one, that's another Brooks cherry. That's what the other one was that's dead. That Brooks cherry obviously likes it back here. You know, it's grown a yard this year too. So I don't know, never know with things. Now I had a uh, giant Fuyu persimmon back here, it died. Um, I think it got too much water. This is a real low spot in the yard. So anyway, this is my Anna apple. I've given up on trying to prune it. It's just gonna get as big as it gets, um, which is why I'm probably not gonna put anything else back here except maybe 
I've got some um, banana trees stuff, banana plants that, uh, that I'm rooting as well. I'm gonna try to put those back here. This is a kiwi vine. I'm pretty sure that's what this is. Um, don't know what's going on down here exactly. I planted it last year um, and I just I put it on a tomato cage just kind of playing. Ah, got some native weeds in here causing problems. But this is this is the kiwi vine here. Um, yeah you see there it is right there. I was trying to see if I could make it grow up and grow onto this elderberry and if it'll do that then the elderberry can act as a, uh, a lattice for it so that's pretty cool this is my all right so this is a persimmon sijo this is a sijo persimmon and i mean y'all see it y'all see how tall it gets up there it looks like it's about nine ten feet tall now that thing was a stick when i got it i mean maybe a foot tall so and it was way smaller than this one okay just goes to show you that you don't have to buy a big tree if you buy one that's got good root stock you put it in the right place and feed it this is a replacement golden dorset it's doing okay first year in the ground got about a foot and a half two feet of new growth all the way around um still getting established uh this is my go goji berry over here and gooseberries i'm about to hit those with the mower because they are not doing well back here i don't know if it's back here or what it is but they don't like it and they are not making berries and they are in my way if they're not making food for me so now this is one of my oh this is my anna raspberry and raspberry the yellow kind um this it's doing fairly well now that's you know i bought it last year from tractor supply it was a little stick as well and so it's it's doing pretty well that canna that canna is just really it's beautiful but darn if it isn't in the wrong place all right now let me tell y'all something i was out here the other day i was out here the other day and i saw something that i wanted y'all to take a look at but i wasn't sure but now i've come back out and i'm i'm pretty sure i know what i've got here check this out all right so this is my fuyu persimmon it's been in the ground maybe this is this third year second year I'm not sure but check this out so most of the tree looks like this you know everywhere where there would be a a bloom is sort of you know brown and dead you know that's kind of what I'm seeing all over but then this this was some new growth that came off last year now it's, it's above the graft so it's okay so we know this is for you Boom shakalaka. All right, so after the Fuyu persimmon, we've got the, uh, this is one of my Asian pears, the Chojuro pear. It's got some things going on with the leaves here. But, you know, generally it's, it's growing pretty well. A little bit of up top growth, but of course this is a brand new tree. And that base has gotten bigger. So that means to me that my roots are doing really well down there. I mean, obviously I've got it irrigated um, I don't know how you garden without irrigation. I, I, it would frustrate me to the point where I would just have to quit. The bees are doing well. Um, you can see them coming and going. I'm trying to build up comb. I've been feeding them sugar water. Uh, my wife's been helping me with that a lot, so that's been really nice. Um, so anyway, both sets of bees are doing really well. I've got a third set at the garden, but uh, that's not going on yet. Got to do something with this pile of junk here. A whole bunch of brick and stuff. This is my pluary, pluary tree. Um, it has put on a whole ton of new growth this year. I mean, so it's doing really well. The base of it's gotten a lot bigger. So it's good and rooted in now. That's really what I like to see. I like to see the tree growing. And if the tree grows well, then we're doing good. I'd like to see that tree put on a little bit more weight all right next all right next we have a little blackberry patch that i started now you know, some of these canes are not doing well 
I don't know what's going on here. That's I had to go back and look and see which one's which. But um didn't get a lot of uh pollination on those this year but we are putting out new canes as you see here now that one seems to be dying off at the top i don't know what's going on there hmm but new growth right that's all that's what it's about and it it died at the top and so it's putting out new lateral growth a whole bunch of new lateral growth so hopefully those will be good berries next year all right this is one that i put in the ground as well you see, I got a bunch of new canes here, a bunch of new canes, and those will be my fruit for next year. Gotta get those daggone white flies, man. Killing me. So, they love this stuff here. Man, they love new new green growth. Um, man, they jump away fast, too. Anyway, that's what's going on there. I got a little bit of borage for the bees. And they've been, you know, the bees have been really enjoying that borage. So I'm going to, it's going to go to seed and it might take over, but I'll mow it. Pretty easy to pick it out. All right, so here goes, here goes the strawberries. You know, I didn't get 100% success rate with them. Had a lot of them die back. But anyway, I finally quit picking off the blossoms. It's June, middle of June. And I said, that's, that's long enough. So we got strawberries coming in, several of them on some of our plants here and some several plants have been shooting off runners so all those plants that we lost you know that we lost uh there's another berry there all those plants that we lost they'll send out runners and we'll fill that space back up in no time i planted some borage even up here thinking you know hey let's bring the bring the bees up here and it, it's kind of cool you'll see the bees come out of here and they go up through here and they'll they'll come up here and you'll see them on the blossoms but they also go out through that little opening right there so that's that's really kind of neat all right so talking about runners see that plant there no uh no strawberries on it but check out this runner that it sent out one plant extra two plants extra and i think that's going to be three plants extra in no time so all good then we got you know, more strawberries there they're gonna put on more strawberries here i mean plant for plant these are sequoia strawberries yeah, that's really cool i mean look at that little no nothing plant there i'm gonna let him get a little more established pick that off and throw it to the birds it's a cool move you're doing there honey that's honey and that's butter he bites <sighs> Let's see. yeah i mean you know we're doing really well on this and if and my thinking is because this is in the middle of the yard like i said the sun comes up over there and goes over there this gets most most of the sun for the day i'm thinking about um replacing this ghetto looking gutter with a real gutter system you know buy some buy some cheap well i mean just real like get three or four levels of gutters here they won't shade each other out but for you know maybe an hour hour and a half a day and um just get like three or four levels of them get somebody to get it get like a you know make it look professional and then run the drip irrigation again on it um and i really think i could put out enough strawberries that'd make it worth it and i could also come up here and put a netting system you know i can come up here and put a netting system and let it drape down and then just hook it hook it into all the sides i think it would work really well all right so then this is probably the healthiest looking plant i've got i mean that's that's a good looking plant there and it's starting to put out runners as well i'm trying to tuck it tuck it in here so it'll start running that way all right more borage i've tried eating those blossoms and you know i just don't taste the cucumber it's just kind of eh. there you go more strawberries so we're gonna get a strawberry harvest off of that this year as long as the birds leave us alone um but like i say i think i'm gonna do something more you know several levels drip irrigation all around it pull a you know i got i've got more of this plastic netting stuff here that i'm using as a fence and i'll just drape it over top and hook it to the sides um 
and that should keep the birds out. I'm also thinking about doing some raised beds here, you know, in the yard, kind of where this, this trailer is, doing some raised beds here. I think that would look really good. All right, I've been talking about the drip irrigation. Of course, it's, you know, if, if anybody's interested in me doing a, like a tutorial on drip irrigation, post it in the comments. I'll be glad to, um, I'll be glad to do one. It's, drip irrigation is so simple. All you got to know is the parts, the pieces. And once you know, I mean, you just, you take this main cord and you take it to wherever it is you want, and then you tap into it. This is your trunk line. So I'd be glad to do a irrigation video, but what I've got going on here is one line coming in from my well, and then I've got it coming into a four-way splitter. Most of it's off right now because we're, I mean, we are getting water right now. Um, and then I run these single phase repeaters on. And so this, this one feeds all of that and all of my trees over there that I've already showed y'all. Um, this one keep, and I've got this barely turned on because I don't want much water coming out, but it runs about every six hours for just a couple minutes and puts water into the chicken coop. This one um, does the rest of the stuff I'm about to show y'all. All right, so here we go. All right, we've got some onions that we got from the grocery store and I stuck them in the ground or I stuck them in a pot. And I mean, these are just green onions and, and they, that's, that's good looking right there. Could eat the heck out of that. Um, then I've got, this is a, uh, <clears throat> this is a black mission fig there in a pot. This is, and that one, that was a uh, piece that came up on its own at the base of the black mission fig I have. It had some roots on it. I stuck it in a pot and you know, you see it's a foot tall. This I did from cutting, uh, from a cutting. You can see that I rooted it. Um, I rooted it last year. And it's looking like it wants to put out some figs. None yet though. All right, then same thing here from a cutting. That's both of those are Celeste figs. Then I've got my um, tomatoes here. See that one split. We're getting so much water, and I'm gonna go ahead and eat that because those are delicious. All right, that's a sun gold cherry tomato. I recommend everybody grow one of those because God Almighty, they're good. Um, and I don't just love tomatoes. I don't know what kind of tomatoes these are, other than that's a sun gold cherry. Need to cut that off. But um, anyway, a bunch of tomatoes here. A bunch of tomatoes here. Then we've got a lemon tree that. I'll figure out what needs to happen to that, but I've I've got all the water turned off, so nothing's getting watered right now. Now this is my Kishu Mandarin, and it's putting out a lot of new growth. I mean, this is all, probably about half of this is new growth from last week, so um, it's getting a little growth spurt, which is great. That was a stick this year. It was smaller than this little stick that it's sitting next to, so it's, it's doing great. Um, that's my Easy Peel Clementine, and it's doing well. I mean, it's got him a little, that's why I love citrus. You know, they'll put you, I mean, even the man, Kishu Mandarin. I mean, look, I mean, come on, that's a Clementine. Brand new, brand new tree. I just, I mean, I got this this year. It was, I mean, the root ball was that big. So that's great. That's a Calamondin. Those are coming along really well. Looks like it's gonna bloom again before you can finish it off of those fruit. I really enjoy doing the citrus stuff. I mean, that's why I got them in these pots that have handles on them because I might have to put them up in the winter time, but they're doing great. This is a lime. Uh, I can figure out what kind it is exactly. Uh, Persian, um, Persian lime, uh, let's see, Tahitian, Persian Tahitian lime. And what I love about the, I mean, you take this, rub the leaves, sniff them, and it smells like lime. Just that, that a lot this is another uh, it's a lime quat okay that's a lime quat and it's doing kind of rough as well not not looking like it's all that healthy i've kind of checked around to make sure it doesn't have any thing on it disease wise and it seems to be fine so i don't i don't know i put um the miracle grow stakes that you can buy in the store the little um, fertilizer stakes I took one, there's one in each one of these pots. I just put it in there this week. All right, here's another uh, Celeste fig tree cutting. Um, it's doing really well. Um, no figs on it, but I, for some reason, this Celeste tree, this is my, my mum fig. These are all from my mum fig, all the Celeste. Um, 
they are kind of slow in producing figs. So, because my parents have one they put in their yard that we rooted by putting a br uh, brick on it. Um, and it took, I mean, it's really this year just now putting on real figs. And, um, golly, it must have it must took a six or seven, taken six or seven years for it to do. Um, this is a black mission fig and it's kind of growing funky to the side next time I repot it I'll pot it so that that grows vertically but anyway that's what that is um, it's growing well that was from a cutting this is another uh, another black mission from cutting um, that was this year I mean that that was the end of a branch it rooted and I threw it in a pot and it has just gone crazy this is an avocado seed I avocado from seed that I grew so that's kind of fun um, doing well you know it's kind of hiding underneath this uh, camellia tree camellia bush so that's doing well all right see them daggum white flies gotta kill them they suck the nutrients out and don't let your fig trees grow they love them too look at them Ah. Ah. I ain't get any of those, I don't think. Man, they love them too. Hold on. Got one of them. <laughs> All right. Next up. All right. Over here, this is all on the same drip system, all of this stuff now. Um, this is a Pakistan mulberry pakistan mulberry here um and y'all can see it that thing was like this tall when i got it and it's it's working on being four and a half five feet tall three feet four feet wide it's putting out tons of new growth it's growing like crazy so i'm excited about that i'm planning on planting that in the fig i mean in the in the chicken coop um i mean i was thinking it's gonna take a year or two for it to get enough size but daggum it's it's going to be big enough that I can plant it up. I, I think I'll be able to plant it this fall and put it in there. Um, and then next year it'll be putting out uh, putting out mulberries for me and the chickens to enjoy. Because, you know, whatever I don't get or falls off the tree, the chickens will enjoy. So, again, all right, this is a strawberry tree. It um, doesn't actually have strawberries. It's just, you know, y'all Google it. It's, it's interesting. There's some new research that says that it can cure... Uh, diabetes which yeah, I, I don't have it but it's in my family so why not it's evergreen it'll grow 30 40 feet tall i'm thinking front yard for that one all right more black uh, no no no. this is a that's the chicago hardy that's one of the cuttings off the chicago hardy which is exactly what that is right there as well uh this is a black mission this is a thornless key lime. Y'all can't see that at all. There you go, thornless key lime. Um, just all new acquisitions for this year. Uh, this is another, ooh, that's a, I'm not sure which one that is. If you don't label these things, you forget. This is supposed to be a black Madeira, but um, it's a fig cutting that I rooted, bought it on eBay, um, one of three, the other two didn't make it this one is supposed to be a now that's this the advertising matters it said a black fig from the island of madeira in portugal so i think that's what it is but i do not think that it is a black madeira not what not what people are saying online anyway but anyway it's, i mean because it's, it's just growing too fast i mean that's that's all all this year that's just too fast so anyway this is a desert king desert king fig again it was like this big when i got it so the size of the tree you buy does not matter it's just the quality of the tree this is a laterula okay now it was three times as tall when we got it but it, it had some issues stunted growth whatever and so it's still only about a foot tall versus the desert king that is just outshining it like crazy all right pest damage on my rooted cutting but it did root um i'm gonna pull him out there's no point in that but you can see it did root you know i mean it 
it rooted and it was going to keep on doing some things here but no i'm not waiting on that i'll put something else in that pot but all of that tomato there and not a doggone tomato on it so you know blah this is my um uh bonanza bonfire this is the bonfire peach patio peach beautiful tree right and it's got peaches on it but y'all can't i mean we you can't eat those they're, they're, not, they're, they're not edible no good so i'm gonna graft onto that with my um, indian blood peach or something else maybe my alberta or georgia georgia peach i don't know over here obviously i've got <laughs> hang on bugs everywhere um over here obviously my wall of tomatoes and they are producing like crazy uh let's see we have the reed avocado okay i've got the shade cloth on it just straight up burlap over top of a tomato cage and y'all can see the new growth on this tree this year obviously it's establishing itself in the pot doing really well the base of it has not grown much which means it's still putting down roots pretty heavily um this is my maywa kumquat and let's see if you can get in here and see it has just gone through a bloom still going through a bloom every morning i see all kinds of pollinators i see bumblebees i see my honeybees i really enjoy doing this citrus and this tree i've read up can take it down to about 12 degrees fahrenheit and that's as cold as we get here so that bad boy is going to live there um it may end up going in the ground i don't know and if yeah it may end up going in the ground because no reason to leave something in a pot if it'll survive in the ground it'll do better in the ground so anyway we'll let it we'll let it see if it'll overwinter if it overwinters great if it doesn't then you know it's dead and i throw it away and i get another one throw it in the pot and make sure i keep it up keep it up but if it does go in the ground it's probably going in the front yard because it's evergreen and i evergreen does great outside so here's my pot of uh carrots you can see you know uh, the, the little pink things those are the seeds that didn't come up so those were supposed to be the the easy seed or whatever that i i bought from i think it was lowe's yeah don't buy those things because I got maybe 20% germination rate. I mean, that, that thing should be slap full. And you can see there's a lot of space in there. So. They grew pretty well, though. Um, and that was not good garden soil. This is a bonanza peach, right? This is the other variety. It's not as pretty. They're patio peaches, both of them. So you got them in planters here. Um, and they're not going to get too much bigger than this. And see the other one? It's, it's real pretty. But this one had figs on it, oh, excuse me, uh, peaches this year. Had five peaches, and we picked all five of them. And y'all, they were delicious. Big old fat peaches. I mean, you couldn't tell they weren't from a normal peach tree. So we were we were very excited about that. Um, just doing a little weeding while I got y'all with me. My wife's uh, little wildflower thing going on over here. She loves wildflowers. All right, let's. let's next is the indian blood peach of course there's our bonanza there indian blood peach i mean it this has really started to thicken up and i mean this is this year you know when i when i pruned it i pruned it back to here and you know these these branches here were only maybe this thick i mean they were less than a pencil sized um so i mean it's, it's put on a lot of new growth it really likes this spot. Um, I put this is this is just um, hardwood hardwood uh, wood shavings from a local barrel making plant. Uh, they make barrels and they have to saw them up. And when they do, they have sawdust. And this is just hardwood sawdust. Um, I mean, look, I got corn growing right there. See? I'm gonna leave it there. If it makes corn, it makes corn. I'll eat it. All right, so next. Let's see. All right, so Congo watermelons. They're sending out runners, flowers everywhere. I haven't seen a, a watermelon yet um, growing, but there you go. Got my little container garden, my little chimneys. You can see there. Um, 
they're doing really well got a bunch of beans in there and they to get into this is my blue curled scotch kale here doing really well um let's see what else then this is my swiss chard and it's just about done for the year got some more beans back there another sun gold cherry tomato there and you can see I'm back up and not fall down while i do it i mean it's trying to grow up that that building and i've i finally decided i'm not going to prune it i'm just going to let it grow and let it do its thing my um cold hardy avocado from fastgrowingtrees.com it's doing well you know it's branching and hey, that's a that's a tri branch this year see um putting off new growth again it kind of it, it did more new growth around february that always makes me nervous it starts in february march it starts putting out new growth that's all what it put out this year you know about five six inches of new growth <clears throat> i think we're gonna get us a late frost and kill it all i ended up you know and there's some more new growth at the bottom that i can't bear to cut off because i don't want it to die more tomatoes i lost one i don't know probably fusarium wilt i think i mean it just was like do, 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 do. whole thing died banana plants i told y'all i got an extra one i'll show y'all that in a little bit but that's i mean they're doing pretty well that's my ice cream banana and my missy lukey banana low quiet you know going crazy got some sunflowers that my son and i planted let's see here there you go sunflower look at that one that bad boy look at him leaning over can't hardly see it's too bright but doing well now my that right there let's see Koronecki olive um, I had to replant it this year I had it too deep and it was getting too much water I raised it up about five inches and it appears to be doing better this is my um kefir pear and it has just gone nuts i mean it's it's probably grown six feet this year seven feet in all directions um, i'm thinking about grafting onto that next year take some of these big lateral branches and graft onto them um, i just se separated my elephant ear over here so um, it should kind of perked back up it started being real small mum fig as y'all know doing really well arbutina olive growing nicely getting it into the right shape here um you know these are really slow growing trees i don't i mean they're not supposed to be fast growing but um i'm happy with those they're doing well there's another arbutina there that's another arbutina there it's still in a pot i hadn't it up because i'm thinking about putting it up front um this is my violette de bordeaux fig um it's doing really well yes it is a violette de bordeaux with some really weird leaves on it but that's what it is that's a uh brown turkey fig it um it got hit by the frost this year i had a blanket over it but it it still got hit by frost so ended up uh no figs on it this year it's all right It'll come back be better next year. Olympian fig. And I'm gonna get in here and clean this whole bed out and you know bring it down to the ground with a with a brush cutter and open this up so that I can put maybe one more fig tree back here in this corner and one more fig tree over here. Um, kind of make this my little fig area. And uh, anyway, but look at these elephant ears, man. These things are enormous. I mean, I can't. I can't describe how big this is, so y'all just look at this. All right, here we go. All right, I mean, I'm I'm not a small dude. <laughs> These things are huge. That thing is absolutely enormous. Yeah. So, you know, those things are doing great. I need to separate them. See, got two plants. I need to separate it, um, and I will. I mean, I mean, see, it's trying to push up more. So I'm going to pot those up and try to sell them. Um, more uh, purple tree collards over here in a line, irrigated. 
This is a pomegranate, but it's I learned it's a flowering pomegranate and not a fruiting pomegranate. So I'm 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 digging these up. See, there's there's one in a pot there. I dug it up, and that's where I put that other fig tree. This one's gonna get dug up as well. I'll put a fig tree here. Uh, and like I said, all of this is coming down up to the fence. I think you can see the fence back there. All of that's gonna come down, except the trees. And then I'll, and you know, see more drip irrigation there. Uh, it's one of my rose bushes. Gorgeous roses. Woo, watch out, don't stick your hand in a wasp. They smell so good. They smell so good. All right, let's take you through here. All right, I'll take you through the gate here. All right, so here's the pawpaw patch. Um, I believe all the pawpaws I transplanted died. You know, it happens. This is the one that I brought from the upstate and it is doing very well. And I think it really likes this spot. Um, but all the other ones I brought out here, I am pretty sure, I am pretty sure these are all dead. See that? couple back there as well yeah I'm pretty sure there's a dead so this is my quince not sure what kind of quince but it's coming down as well I'm gonna chop it down and start over because it keeps getting all the fruit comes off looking like that yeah you see that one over there as well they just they get there's some kind of rust or something they get so I those got to go if you're not gonna produce you got to you got to go somewhere else all right so this is the black mission fig I brought it down from the mountains as well. Um, it's gonna make some figs this year, maybe if they get done before before the frost. Um, but it shot it shot that off, and I'll I'll cut that down uh, once this is really good and done. Um, it keeps shooting off new new little shoots, and I just keep pulling them off. And if they've got roots, I stick them in a cup. And if they root, then I'm gonna turn. Them all right, over here are the blueberries. I'm squidging, squish, squish, squish through the mud. All right, so blueberries, borage. Borage is about dead. Looks like it's going to seed. Huh. <laughs> All right, so blueberries. They're about done producing. No, it's not done. No, it's not done yet either. Birds have been helping themselves a little bit. There's a couple. I love grazing through my garden. Um, this is a guava. Smoke them if you got them, drink them if you got them. This is a Peruvian white guava that I bought this year and it's doing really well. Um, I'll say it's gonna flower again. That's cool. It already flowered once. Um, and it's, I mean, there's no, the, the cross pollinator I've got is that one. That's a pineapple guava. And because obviously I bought this online, it's, you know, it, it, it's internal clock is off. I'm hoping next year they'll be in sync and this one will cross pollinate with that one and we'll get some um, pineapple guavas and some Peruvian white guavas. All right, so this is a Titan blueberry and I really like these Titans. They, um, and man, do they need water. That's the only thing about these uh, Titans is um, birds got after that one. They need water because it was about a week there that I I don't have drip irrigation up here. I've got regular irrigation, but I had a busted, uh, busted sprinkler head, and you know didn't want to just. It wasn't watering, so we you know all the rain we've gotten the last week or two. So it's it's really, really put the weight on these berries, and these titans get enormous. Um, I mean, really, they get you know that big when they're ready to go. I told you the bees love this, uh, love this borage, man. If you want something for your pollinators. 
the plant borage. And they really, really like it. Um, another Titan blueberry here. That one's, yeah, see, it's not ready. I always do that. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's ready. You know, see that? And I'm like, yeah, and then, no, uh, no. I eat it anyway. Oh, they're so good. And it's a different taste. It's different. Now, see, this one, we got a big old branch of them here. That one's beautiful. Y'all see that? That's gorgeous. All right, so there are the blueberries. I got to get in there with some gloves and weed it. Then over here, and this is the end. Kind of anticlimactic. But I got some spider wart that I dug up on the highway. Um, it, it will spread, and it's really pretty. My wife likes it, so there you go. We're in the front yard, so... Um, evergreens as much as I can um, my loquat here another loquat here a little bit of boards beside it um, now this is the only graft I had succeed this year and uh, pretty proud of that and uh, considering I screwed it up and how I did it but it worked um, and of course it I cut it off when I brought it home because it was probably eight feet tall and I don't really want them to get that tall here you know i'm gonna try to keep them about like that you know not to the height of the house and yes i know my house needs painting and it's in the works um these um choke berries here i think they also called aronia berries um lead farmer gave me those i mean just bought them and gave them to me you know that's i can't say thank you enough so in any event, he, you know, he gave me those, and, you know, they've put on a good bit of new growth this year. Um, I need to get in here and mulch this bed and, and do some other things, but, you know, that's just, if you look at your garden and say you're done, you don't know what you're doing. Y'all, I hope, I hope y'all enjoyed that. Um, let me know if y'all want a, a video on the irrigation. I'm glad to do it. Um, yeah, I mean, it won't take me three to five minutes to explain all the pieces. Uh, you can order them all on Amazon, because I do, um, or Walmart, or, you know, any of them. And uh, anyway, be glad to tell you about them. But I'm going to go do some work. See you all later.